Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to part two on our CT evaluation of renal masses. We left off last time talking about non-contrast CTs, and then speaking about how the importance of contrast delivery, the acquisition timing becomes critical to what information we see. I'm going to speak about this in detail, but I'll also make the point that as we go to artificial intelligence and things like radiomics, this even takes on a more important feature. When we talk about kidneys, we talk about three phases with contrast. Arterial, or what's called cortical medullary phase, at about 30-ish seconds post-injection. Nephrographic phase, 60 to 90 seconds. We typically are at about 70 seconds. And excretory phase, typically four to five minutes uh, post-injection. Now, if we speak about the cortical medullary phase, it's that phase where the cortex is maximally enhanced up to about 150 Hounsfield units, and the medullary enhancement is relatively low. So the difference between cortex and medulla is about 90 Hounsfield units. It's ideal for looking at arterial structures, particularly the renal arteries. It's excellent for preoperative planning because you could look at the relationship of vasculature and the patient's tumor. It defines the tumor vascularity. It's the best phase for distinguishing a papillary from a clear cell renal cell carcinoma. Changes in perfusion, whether it's due to vessel narrowing or occlusion, may be best seen in this phase. And tumor detection at times will only be in the arterial phase. Here's a good example of volume rendering in MIP, showing you very nicely the cortical medullary interface, as well as the ability to look at the patient's arterial map. And then we quickly flip over to this case, where you can see a mass, both on volume rendering and MIP. The mass is very vascular with AV shunting. It's a clear cell renal cell carcinoma. You also see the branching of the renal arteries to the lower pole. You see the neovascularity. If you were thinking of doing a partial nephrectomy, you can plan from these images. Now, in this article way back when from Rupert Kalmar, in the cortical medullary phase, attenuation values of clear cell were significantly higher those than those of papillary. And you could see the average of clear cell was 152 and papillary was 61. Now you can see there's a range. So sometimes papillaries are up to 120 and clear cells as low as 90. But in better than 90 or 95% of the cases, by following that rule of about 100 Hounsfield units being above 100, arterial is going to be clear cell. Beneath papillary, you're going to do really well. So here's an example. Mass right kidney, nothing very tricky. Non-contrast, it measures about 40 Hounsfield units, which is typically what uh, renal cells will measure. But there it is, a 5 centimeter mass, markedly vascular, well-defined sharp margins on the early phase imaging. There it is on the coronal display as well as on the volume coronal display. And here the lesion is washing out. When you look at the lesion, you could see the interface. The cinematic really shows you the vascularity of the lesion and the disruption of the patient's cortex and medullary interface by the tumor. And again, one of the things we'll speak about with cinematic rendering is how useful it is for preoperative planning. Here's that tumor from a posterior projection. And that was a clear cell renal cell carcinoma. Another example of a clear cell, large right renal mass, there is the vascularity. Now, I show this case to make a point that sometimes in clear cell, particularly when they get larger, the central portion is low density because of necrosis. And in fact, it's been shown that necrosis centrally has a worse prognosis. But the reason I make the point is, is where do you put the cursor? If you put the cursor in the necrotic area, it's going to be lower and you're going to say papillary, clear cell, papillary. You put it in the periphery, you're going to say clear cell. You got to put it in the enhancing region. You can't put it in the area of central necrosis. That does not give you a good feel. The capsular component of the lesion, we often see a capsule, though that's not all that helpful in determining resectability. But it's a good bit of information uh, in terms of telling the surgeon, particularly with smaller tumors, when they're thinking of partial nephrectomies. And again, here is the cinematic of that mass. Now, when you look at the differential enhancement of clear cell and papillary, this article by Rupert we mentioned a moment ago, you can see their sensitivity and specificity. Indeed, were very high, with 100 being a cutoff number. People have argued 90 or 100. 
A hundred's a really good number. It's easy to remember, and it's giving you better than 95% accuracy across the board. And as I mentioned, the reason it's not perfect is because 90% of renal cells that are clear cell are hypervascular, but that means 10% are not. So here's a chart we do above 100. You can see clear cell. You can see papillary typically below 90, chromophobe in that 90 to 110 category, and occasionally fat poor AMLs are seen where a good proponent of the lesion or a good component of the lesion is really going to be vascular, so it'll be higher attenuation, but the key thing is fat. I'll mention now that uh, we sometimes theoretically can see fat in renal cell carcinomas, or so it's been written, but invariably it's a case with an aggressive tumor invading the perirenal fat. You're not going to confuse that with a, a fat poor angiomyolipoma. And of course, classic angiomyolipomas are in the minus 50 to minus 90 Hounsfield unit range, typically. Other articles have come along, like this article by Salk that made the point that not only can we distinguish between tumor types, but the cytogenetic characteristics of clear cell can be defined based on vascularity. We're able to determine, based on histogram parameters, many important features related to the tumors, including how they might respond to various chemotherapies. Using things like uh, histogram analysis, the um, many of the things we're doing now, both in pancreatic cancer as well as other tumors, really gives you the ability to discriminate clear cell from papillary with a high degree of accuracy. This article by Ahmed makes the point natural history of clear cell is variable with some tumors exhibiting indolent growth, others aggressive growth patterns. Histologically defined tumor necrosis has been shown to be an independent negative prognostic factor for metastasis and overall survival. Remember I mentioned to you before when you have central necrosis like this case, and the one I showed you before, it's problematic. Remember, I also mentioned don't measure density in the central necrotic zone, measure in the periphery. Patients with central necrosis are just going to do worse. You can see this tumor looks aggressive. You can see the neovascularity. You can see the central necrosis. You see the washout of the tumor. And there it is very nicely shown there as well. So again, in terms of information, one of the things I'm learning with AI and radiomics and other things is that we spent a lot of effort saying there's a mass. And we said it's malignant and benign. We were so happy. We said it's papillary versus clear cell. We're even happier. But we realized there's so much information within the scan that we haven't been able to analyze. So we're even going to do better in the future. And here's the delayed phase, which shows you necrosis extremely well. Here it is early phase with the cinematic, really showing you the texture of the tumor compared to texture of normal kidney, as well as the areas of central necrosis, very nicely placed in this example. Now, with clear cell renal cell carcinoma, the neovascularity is indeed very important. It's one of those things that can easily help you in making diagnoses and again, the cases with neovascularity just tend to do poorly. You can see in this case, there's so much central necrosis. There's neovascularity around the edge of the lesion, but it's that central necrosis that's critical. The MIP imaging is very helpful. Look at that neovasculature. This is a kind of lesion you look at and say, well, maybe it's a papillary. But what you're really dealing with is so much necrosis. It's the rim that allows you to think about clear cell. Here's the MIP imaging on the coronal view. And here is the excretory or washout phase showing in necrosis, the tumor nodularity around the periphery of the lesion, and what looks like a pseudocapsule. And here it is again, just really, really nice explanation and vision. Again, if you ask me where cinematic is going, I think it's going to help us with this texture mapping, looking at lesion aggressiveness. And again, I think a lot of the things we see with texture mapping become built in as we look at radiomics, and here's the coronal view of that. Now, in terms of renal cell, things we look at are vascular involvement. We look at their arteries, but we also look at the veins. CT is very good, as in this case, showing you the tumor growing into the left renal vein, coming near the IVC. You can see it's not bland clot, because look how vascular it is. Look at the collaterals around the kidney. You can see that very nicely. A very highly vascular tumor, AV shunting, 
tumor extension into the renal vein with lots of collaterals present. Very nicely shown on these coronal views. And you can see it nicely on the 3D mapping. Just impressive, the neovascularity in the tumor growing into the renal vein. Just a really nice example. And you can see the tumor into the left renal vein and into the IVC. Cinematic rendering, again, I'm trying to give you a spectrum to look at these tumors. There's the extensive tumor nodularity, necrosis, and you can see the upper pole enhances normally. Just a very nice example showing you the full extent of the tumor, also some of the neovascularity, also the vessel involvement. Now we are seeing more path calls of sarcomatoid renal cell with clear cell features. Pathologists always change or subdivide categories. Sometimes it's very critical, sometimes less than critical. But here's just a really good aggressive looking tumor with a cystic component with calcification, impressive central necrosis, impressive neovascularity, and that was a sarcomatoid tumor. Now, in terms of calcification, you can see dystrophic calcification in tumors. When you see a cystic lesion with calcification, this was just a cyst near the tumor. Now, it's not to say that cysts can't develop tumors in their wall or that cysts can be invaded by solid masses. So in this case, you see the solid mass, you see the neovascularity, and you also see the tumor. And here it is very nicely shown. That cystic component just must have been there forever. Maybe an old hematoma, an old cyst with calcification, very nicely defined. And here's just some more views showing you that pattern. In terms of the cinematic in this case, again, look at the tumor infiltration in the left kidney. Compare that to the orderly cortex and cortex medullary interface in the right kidney. And here's the inside of that cystic shell with calcification looking directly inside the cystic lesion. Just a really good visualization. And here it is from a coronal perspective. Again, renal veins seen nicely, renal arteries seen nicely as well. And from a sagittal view, a beautiful view of the cystic component of the tumor, the calcified cyst, the infiltration, the necrosis, and some of the normal upper pole of the patient's kidney. Steve Rowe and colleagues wrote an article about cinematic, making the point that this can be very useful. Uh, it provides comparison of, we could provide a comparison of uh, cinematic findings with traditional methods of CD and showed some of its advantages. And that becomes very, very important. Now, going back to some comments with cinematic, cinematic also can be helpful for looking at these non-enhancing tumor components. I think one of the things we're gonna find with cinematic is being able to break up the tumor into different parts to use that information for patient management. I think that's gonna be very helpful. Now, I mentioned before that the average patient with renal cells is about age 64. I also mentioned patients with syndromes like von Hippel-Lindau can have multiple renal cells, which you can see in this case. They can have multiple uh, pancreatic masses from uh, patients with uh, cystadenomas to neuroendocrine tumors. They can have adrenal lesions, but just a beautiful example of multiple renal cell carcinoma, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, and renal cysts. So again, multiple renal cells got to be thinking about a syndrome and very nicely shown in this case. And these are one of the patients who'll get a partial nephrectomy, even though you know you can't probably cure the tumor, you can debulk. Now, as we go to papillary renal cell carcinomas, what do we know about those? They're small, they're typically low-grade tumors, typically homogeneous on CT and hypovascular. They can be multifocal or bilateral, and they have a better prognosis. They're ideal for nephron sparing surgery, and facts be told, they're also ideal for being able to simply follow the patient. Now, in terms of numbers, uh, again, the attenuation value is roughly around 60, but surely under 90. A low tumor to aorta enhancement ratio or tumor to renal parenchyma enhancement ratio is more likely to indicate a papillary renal cell carcinoma. And here's just some examples. Now, I mentioned papillaries are often small, but they don't necessarily need to be. Here's a larger papillary in the left kidney. But there it is with contrast. You can see sharp margination. It's just not enhancing. Could this be a clear cell? Probably less than 10% chance. This was a papillary, well-defined capsule, 
partial nephrectomy would be ideal. This would be a borderline partial nephrectomy, but because you know it's a papillary, you're more apt to do it. Here it is on the excretory phase, both with volume rendering, classic, and with cinematic rendering. And again, in the cinematic, you nicely see the tumor, the central necrosis, normal enhancement, abnormal enhancement, and infiltration of the lower pole of the left kidney by the patient's tumor. And here it is again, simply changing some of the parameters to give you a little bit more information. Now, one thing about papillaries, because they're small and well-defined often, they're easy to miss. If you look at the image upper corner, it looks like a normal study. One of the reasons we say do not do non-contrast CTs in patients with hematoma only is you can miss small tumors, both clear cell and papillary, but especially papillary. You can see once you give contrast, there's the tumor. It's about a two and a half centimeter lesion, which on the 3D volume rendering, nicely shown off the lower pole of the kidney. You can see how easy it is to miss. Sometimes you miss it because it's small, but you see it but it's well-defined and you weren't evaluating hematuria and you kind of blow it off as a simple cyst. Now, it could be a high-density renal cyst if these are your only images, but you can't make that assumption. High-density renal cysts and papillary renal cell carcinomas can look identical, particularly on uh, excretory phase imaging. And here's just a nice example of showing it to you from non-contrast to arterial to excretory phase. Again, you're going to miss it non-contrast every time. Now, the second phase to speak about is the nephrographic phase. And again, people talk about 60 to 90 seconds. I'll say 70 seconds. It's the best phase for looking at the veins. Now, you could see the venous involvement, particularly when it's hypervascular involvement on the arterial phase. But sometimes you can't tell flow-related change from thrombus, surely its extent. But you can do that really well on venous phase imaging because it's the perfect time for looking at thrombus. And this article by Guzzo many years ago showed that CT is about 100% accurate for looking for venous involvement and is the most accurate study. The only thing that was missed was potentially small intravenous involvement within a mass within the kidney proper and there's no impact on management. Here's a good example, hypervascular left renal mass. You can see it's growing up into the renal vein. The left renal vein is dilated. Here it is on MIP imaging, and here it is on volume imaging. And you can see the tumor grows into the, eye, into the renal vein and grows just into the IVC. The vascularity is very nicely shown there. Another example, patient with a right renal mass, and surely there's renal vein and IVC involvement. But is this involved or is this just flow related? Well, that becomes important in management. Well, there's no doubt that one of the most important things is the upper extent because that's going to determine whether or not you only have an abdominal approach or a thoracic and abdominal approach when you operate on these patients. But in this case, as you go from the arterial phase to the venous phase, you can see better the true extent of the thrombus, that it's not going inferior, that was simply flow related. You also nicely see the upper extent of the thrombus which was tumor thrombus, but you can see it does not go up into the patient's right atrium. That becomes very important. Another example, a markedly vascular left renal mass, extensive neovascularity shown well on the MIP imaging also. And then here you see the tumor infiltration going into the patient's renal vein. There's abnormal vascularity. It's not bland thrombus, it's tumor thrombus which you also can see the neovascularity and the tumor infiltration on this um, cinematic rendering, nicely showing it to you as well. And here it is with a few more images. And as we mentioned, cinematic rendering is particularly good for looking at complicated studies. And preoperative planning is really an excellent way of doing these studies. Another example, hypervascular lesion left kidney, good for a clear cell, you see the neovascularity, you follow the lesion posteriorly, you can see where exactly you would need to do the surgery. So again, looking at the arteries, looking at the veins, but looking at the mass and creating the different perspectives from where the surgeon can plan on operating becomes very critical. And so cinematic is playing a major role, particularly in partial nephrectomy, particularly in complicated cases. And here's just a few more images in that regard.
Now, we spoke about arterial phase. We spoke about venous phase. We even spoke about the non-contrast phase. The fourth phase, but the third contrast phase, is the excretory phase, which is commonly called CT urography. So let's take a five-minute break, and then we'll come back and do CT urography, and we'll look at some of the things we need to see from the excretory phase. And with that, see you in a couple minutes. If you liked what you heard here today, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and visit our website, ctisus.com, for lectures, quizzes, pearls, and more. Also, be sure to check out our apps that are available for free on the Apple Store. All links are in the description box below.